Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Oh my gosh, those audio levels are a little too crazy. I should take it down a notch. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Today is episode two of this ongoing conquest to recreate our entire zoo from scratch. Oh my gosh. So far, this is uh, Animal 2 out of 114. Uh, so bear with us. Uh, so we're going to be working on our ocelots today. And before I get started, I do need to give a huge shout out to Lucas070 on the Steam Workshop for that beautiful little overpass. That is... I want to say the first blueprint that we're actually using in here, and it's an incredible one. It just outlines how, you know, animals can overpass in, you know, Planet Zoo and stuff like that. It's just an incredible piece. So today we're building for ocelots, and I recently just got these in the last store. They're a beautiful little animal, and they are going to be the headliners of the start of our South America section. Uh, so essentially, you go from the flamingos up until, you know, there's probably going to be another habitat up there, like in between this and the uh, flamingos. But you essentially find your way over here. And this is the first habitat on there. And I was very excited about that because, I don't know, I feel like it's a really fun first habitat animal. Ocelots are really incredibly beautiful animals. And they just don't get enough love, I'm going to be completely honest. South American cats don't get enough love. I'm going to be honest, jaguars are cooler than lions, they're cooler than tigers, and they're cooler than leopards. At least in my opinion, feel free to disagree with me in the comments. But that's essentially going to be what we're going to be working with over here on Hope Harbor. Is just really demonstrating how beautiful South American wildlife can be. So what we're working on over here is quite a little bit of an inspirational, you know, ocelot habitat. It's a little bit going to ham, but I don't really care because I'm having a lot of fun with it nonetheless. So we're kind of working on it over here and just giving it a nice, happy little habitat. In fact, we give them two little habitats. Oh my gosh, they're so lucky. Uh, so we kind of work on that throughout here and we have it look very nice and very gabled So we kind of do a little bit more of climb proof kind of like, you know fencing up there So we kind of have it be kind of curved inwards towards the top and it looks pretty good in the end I don't know. I'm very satisfied with it So we kind of make our way throughout here and start to add where we want our viewing areas to be And I kind of line them out with some glass pieces I think I kind of go back and redo them later because I wanted straight glass and instead of like, you know, curved glass because straight glass is so much easier to build for. But we're working on some of the various elements in here. One of the things I wanted to have is another naturalistic waterfall. And I was very excited about this one. It looks very gorgeous. So I really wanted it to be nice and rocky. And we use like, you know, some of the jet pieces to make it look like, you know, water is coming down it. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. We're doing a bunch of different small things all throughout here. And again, I apologize. I said this in the last video. I'm going to be doing stuff very haphazardly. So I'm going to be doing stuff out of order. I get, start to work on one thing. I get distracted. I work on another thing. And that's just because I need the inspiration to always be there. And that's the reason why the speed build is actually very quick. I work on everything very fast in this one. So I do work on a little bit of backstage holding, so I have like the keeper gates right there, don't tell anyone, but I don't have any animal gates. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably convert one of the windows into one later, when we actually do probably build like indoor cages and stuff like that. When we do get there, of course. But making our way throughout here and adding some grass as well, the periwinkle grass is perfect for this in the Hope Harbor Zoo universe, in the Zooniverse, if that makes sense. Uh, it's going to be in the middle of summer, or at least a little bit more towards like the start of it, where everything is nice, bright, and green, where all the plants are growing, all the flowers are in bloom. Maybe later down the line we could actually turn the snow on and like take some screenies in there. But for the most part, we will be building this implied in constant summer. Uh, because, listen, we're about to come up on summer, and I just want to feel like, you know, nice and tropical. Not really tropical, but nice and summery. Nice and relaxed and stuff like that. So we're also working on a lot more of this curbing as well. Do keep in mind, we're going to be curbing the entire zoo. If I don't curb something in any of these speed builds, let me know. Yell at me and I'll do it in the next episode because, listen, I need to make sure that everything looks nice and clean because I will not go back to anything after. Uh, so we're kind of working on all of that, making sure that everything flows nicely with like the elevations and stuff. 
and we're also starting to work on some of the viewing galleries over there so i am kind of like teetering in between color schemes i'm still not really sold on this and this is why i love this series uh and this is why i love zsu is because i could always change stuff out and have it be like fitting in the lore and whatnot there's a new flamingo pool color by the way check that out but no this is why i love zsu is because it's always a constant changing environment and it's just always perfect reason to go back and fix something up even if it's like color you could say that we gave it a new paint job or something that's why i really do love it uh but essentially we're trying to line up the rest of the habitat with where the fences would be and where the barriers would be and whatnot and i don't think i do it just yet but i do kind of move like that entire um wall back a little bit because keep in mind this is quite big for ocelots you just saw one walk by right there um but we kind of do shrink down their habitat just a tad it still is quite large i would love to join actually i think i already technically am on the ssp within the zsu universe zs universe uh, for ocelots so i do want this to be nice and grand for them Oh my gosh, my stomach's attacking me right now. Uh, but I did want to have this be nice and grand for them. As a way to have them feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more at home, and to encourage breeding a lot more. I think later down the line, we can even kind of like add some, you know, functionality to these. That like, you know, we have a little bit of shade that comes down as a way to, you know, help these guys be encouraged more to breed via privacy and whatnot. You know, it always does help. Uh, so we will have a lot of that coming into play later down the line once the SSPs and breeding comes back and like, you know, breeding programs and whatnot. It'll be very exciting to see how all that comes into play once we actually do get to that point. But working our way throughout here and adding all these tiny little details, some of my favorite things to do now are line glass with like the marquee beams because it really does come out with like such a beautiful, beautiful little end product over there. It just looks incredible in the end. I'm very happy about that. Oh, but what we do over here as well, we kind of line up the top of the habitat. I felt like it needed a little bit more height. Uh, do keep in mind, this would be implied, keep that in mind implied for now, uh, that we will be netting this entire enclosure over. I'm too scared to do real netting, guys. Um, it's too scary for me so in case if anyone wants to do netting uh let me know i'll hit you up with like dimensions of this but making our way throughout here and adding some more tiny little details i felt like we need a little bit more brown in there but we changed that out for green later uh but we add a few more colors in here oh my gosh i am exhausted right now sorry guys uh, but we do add some faux trees, making sure that it feels very naturalistic. Ocelots do climb a lot. In fact, ocelots are extremely arboreal, which has them fill an entirely different niche than um, their cousin, the jaguar, which is very interesting to see. We have a whole press room item about it. I'll get that to you guys momentarily. Just hold, please. I'm just trying to get that all ready. Yeah, there you guys go. Uh, a little bit... A little bit too big let me shrink that down a little bit there you go hopefully you guys can still read that i can't really see but no i really wanted to give these guys a lot of space and a lot of climbing space and that's specifically why we do have that little bit of the um you know of the oh, shoot what's the word that i'm looking for a little bit of the crossover yes the animal overpass um that's why i wanted all that jazz in there because it just it just fit you know and i don't think we're gonna do that for the jaguar admittedly it'd be a lot cooler for the jaguar and you can see we start to do the mesh in here but i end up deleting this all it's kind of sad to say but i really wasn't feeling it all that much so we do kind of get rid of that later down the line but we do have some like you know areas implied where it'd be netted uh, we do have like these nice support beams. I also add the bird safe glass in there because that is very important, especially when you're, you know, an ecological or zoological facility. I started to play with the decals as well, but I really wasn't feeling it. I do so much in this. It's so hard to keep up with. <laughs> but essentially when you're a zoological facility, you got to make sure that you don't only care about your own animals, but you care about the animals around your zoo as well. The ones that are the local residents. 
and that's why we put all that jazz up. And you can see I'm really trying to make that work, but I really wasn't feeling it. Mesh just really is too difficult for me to like get a good grasp on. Maybe later down the line we could actually home our skills a little bit once we do get to like our waterfowl aviaries and you know do some very nice geometric ones. Uh, maybe later down the line we could actually get acquainted with some uh, a lot more organic ones once we actually do get to that point. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys, I'm tired. Wow. Uh, but we also work on the overpass a little bit more. I want to integrate it some more with like, you know, some nice natural features. So we have a little bit of ivy coming down, uh, just as a way to have it feel a little bit more naturalistic and a little bit more immersive. Uh, it would be fake ivy, keep that in mind. We really wouldn't be able to grow kind of like Spanish moss in this climate. And also trying to kind of recreate that little piece over there as a little custom one and I really like the bright green colors that we were able to achieve with that so we kind of do that over there and we kind of try and match out what the uh, framing for that kind of looks like so we kind of work with that and we kind of duplicate it all over the place in just a little bit uh, and it looks pretty good I don't know I'm very happy with it it feels very nice it feels very secure um, and we kind of do duplicate it a couple other places we um kind of hide that one right there we kind of move it a little bit uh, just essentially it looks pretty nice and we add a couple of them all throughout the place just as a way to give the guests a little bit more shade because I know Maine is at the top of the United States but it still gets very hot in there in the summer it's sometimes pretty unbearable uh, it's just that beautiful New England climate that we're so used to up here but we're essentially working on a little bit more of that faux rockery uh, trying to make sure that everything looks nicely and has it feel a little bit more secure. Hopefully later down the line I could actually incorporate a little bit more signs and whatnot, just the way I help it feel a little bit more organic. And yeah, all that jazz. Um, making our way throughout here and adding some more pieces, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more secure. Uh, really happy with it. I don't know, it's just such a fun build this time around. And we also do add some pillars all throughout here as well. Uh, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more secure. I gotta go back and really do the roofing on here, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more secure as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with this area as it's starting to turn out. Uh, we have a lot more South American plans. We have an entire South American house planned out. If you guys are part of ZSU, uh, you could definitely look in like inspiration chat and check that out to see what I'm doing over there. Also, I love using this idea for the walls. Such a nice little fun idea. And I also use a little bit of cork board as a way for like the uh, ocelots to like scratch on. I know that they like their scratching posts and whatnot. So we do a little bit of that as well. And I also have our little blueprint graveyard. Uh, not really blueprint graveyard, but a little dedication area to all the people who have helped us out, whether it be donations, whether it be uh, physical, with like animals or financial with like you know fake currency but we have all that in there but you know what we also have beautiful cinematics thank you guys so much for watching as always you guys are always such gems thank you so much for watching yeah that's pretty much it i already said that what the hell uh and i can't wait to see you all in the next video take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days Bye bye now